In this video, I'm going to share with you three ways to figure out what your VO2 max is. Thought of the day number 34, we'll, we'll come back for a new video. So first of all, let's uh, explain, let's go through what is VO2 max. VO2 max is your body's maximal ability to consume oxygen. Uh, oxygen is central to the functioning of our body. It's central to our performance and to our health, uh, and especially on the side of endurance, if we think about performance. Um, and it's really uh, something that we cannot live without, okay? You can spend days or weeks without eating, you can spend days without drinking, you can spend maybe, maybe a few minutes without breathing, okay? Because we need this oxygen for our body to function. And so VO2 max is simply the maximal amount of oxygen that your body can consume during an intense effort. And there can be multiple ways of using this value uh, in, in training. And I'm gonna talk about this towards the end of the video, uh, how you should and shouldn't use that VO2 max value. Um, but, but let's start with those three ways of how you can determine your VO2 max. So the first very easy accessible way would be to uh, would be to look at your watch. If you have a connected watch, a Garmin watch or else, um, those watches nowadays often uh, calculate your VO2 max based on your training data and they're gonna spit out a value. Um, to give you a little bit of a, a reference, we could say that below 40 is a low VO2 max uh, and you should aim to improve that. We know that the higher your VO2 max, the higher your um, the higher your, your health status and the less chances you have of dying from all-cause mortality of anything uh, that, could, that could get to you. So increase your VO2 max at all cost. Um, above 55, it's starting to become uh, very interesting, it's starting to get a, a really good level of conditioning. Uh, and again, we know that the higher your VO2 max, the better your health is going to be the better your longevity is gonna be, the better your recovery is gonna be. So you really wanna improve that um, as much as you can. Uh, when I'm saying 40, 55, the unit for this is milliliters per kilo of body mass per minute. So you can express VO2 max in a relative value, just like I did here, relative to body weight. You can also express it as an absolute value, so liters or milliliters per minute, okay? Because VO2 max is a rate. It's the rate at which you use auction, auction consumed per minute of time. And so here we have a bit of a, a reference for numbers. And in the third uh, part of the video, I'll also share a VO2 max calculator with you that I created so that you can figure out what your VO2 max is, both in cycling and running without any expensive tools, expensive tests. These are estimates, but we'll come back to those just after. So our watches calculate our VO2 max based on our training data. What I've seen is that if you have a, a balanced out training plan, if you're doing some low intensity, some medium intensity, some high intensity, and that you're tracking all this with your watch, the more data you give it, the better those algorithms are gonna be at determining your VO2 max. And from the physiological testing that I've done, on hundreds of athletes nowadays, those numbers are getting pretty close. Those calculated numbers from the watches are getting pretty close to the reality, to an actual number that we would measure. Um, so this is one way that you can estimate your VO2 max is simply through your watch and again through a balanced training uh, distribution, let's call it, because if you're uh, if your training is skewed one way or the other, you're doing only high intensity all the time, or you're doing only low intensity all the time, well, we're not going to have the right amount of data uh, to calculate it properly. So you might have an underestimated or overestimated VO2 max. But if you have a balanced training plan and you have one of those connected watches, you track your data for long enough, you're going to get a number. That number is close enough to what your actual consumption is going to be. So that's one way of estimating it. Second way would be obviously to measure it. Measure it uh, through a test. So that would be a direct measure and that's the only way of determining 
precisely what your VO2 max is going to be is to measure it with uh, a tool that's going to uh, essentially just uh, determine how much oxygen your body is consuming in real time. So it has an oxygen sensor, uh, a ventilatory flow sensor, and with all those data, it's going to be able to calculate uh, and determine precisely how much oxygen your body consumes during exercise. Uh, those are the types of tests that I conduct, and you can go in any local lab, a sports physio lab, and you can conduct one of those tests. Uh, there's different formats of uh, protocols that you can use in order to determine a VO2 max. Most of them are gonna be pretty short if this is the value that you care about most. If you wanna know your VO2 max, then you're probably gonna aim for a, uh, say 10 to 15 minute step test. So it's pretty short, pretty fast increment from, uh, you know, in different powers or different speeds if you're running. And once you get to the top, once you get to the highest speed on the test and we start to see a plateau in your oxygen consumption, meaning that even though we keep increasing the speed or the power output, your consumption of oxygen does not go up. So there's a plateau at the top. This is determined as your VO2 max. So that's a way to determine that number precisely, but you have to go into a lab. It costs money. The equipment itself is very expensive if you want to do it yourself. So I'd recommend going to a lab or to someone that's competent in doing those tests if this is what you're looking for. That's the second way. The third way, and that's where we get to the calculator I told you about before. The third way would be to um, use some of the studies that have been done up until now, some of the equations, formulas that exist in order to calculate your VO2 max based on a single test, a single effort. And this is something you can do in cycling and something you can do in running as well. There exists other calculators for rowing and such. Um, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to follow the instructions of uh, the sheet that I'm going to link in the description below that you can just uh, download, duplicate for yourself and then use. And the idea is that you're going to enter uh, those values for the test you're going to do in, uh, in cycling. If, I, if my memory serves, the cycling test is a five minute all out test. All out as in you're trying to hold the highest power possible for five straight minutes. This is going to be your score. You enter this and your body weight, and then it's going to calculate based on this, based on the formulas that they have established. And I will link the studies obviously in the, in the spreadsheet. Um, this will give you or estimate your VO2 max. For running, I believe it's a 12 minute test, the Cooper test, um, and why body weight is not used. Uh, that's a question that I've had previously. Why in cycling we use the, the body weight, why in running we don't. Uh, this is simply based on the formulas that they established in the, those different studies. So it turns out that in that second one for running, they didn't use body weight as a parameter. Uh, but again, here we're just looking for an estimate of VO2 max. It's not going to be a, uh, an absolutely precise value because, like I said before, the only way to have a precise value of VO2 max is going to be to measure it directly through a step test with, uh, with the mask, with the, with the whole shebang. Bonjour. So we have the third step, which is do the test either in cycling or in running and then estimate your VO2 max. And again, you can refer yourself back to those numbers really kind of ballpark numbers that I gave you before. Below 40 is low. You should really train more cardio and get that number up. Above 55, you're looking really good. And uh, obviously you can always improve it, but you want to try and maximize that VO2 max over time, over your lifespan, so that you can increase your uh, health span, increase your recovery, and uh, increase your performance as well, if this is what you're after. Now, besides this, kind of ballpark number and figuring out if your VO2 max is low, okay, or high. Um, one thing that is, that is erroneous in my opinion is using this number to then plan your training, okay? There's old papers that plan training based on a percentage of VO2 max. We know today that this is not a good way of planning our training intensities. What we want to do is refer to what we call intensity domains. So to make it very simple, there's low, medium, high, and very high intensity. When we talk about a continuous cardio effort, uh, we can say that low intensity goes up to about four out of 10 uh, on the difficulty scale. Uh, the medium intensity goes from four to about seven, seven and a half. And then high intensity and very high intensity are gonna be efforts that are very hard that are above this. 
Uh, the distinction between high and very high intensity is something I can cover in another video if you're interested in that. Uh, but essentially what we want to do is refer to those types of in, that intensity scale rather than a percentage of your VO2 max because the VO2 max is just your maximal oxygen consumption. It is what is, but it doesn't tell you what you ought to do with it, okay? When we measure something, it doesn't necessarily tell us how we have to use that data moving forward. So more important than your VO2 max, in order to plan your training, you should think and look at how are you training now? Are you doing mostly low intensity? Well, maybe you should add in some higher intensity into your training. Are you only doing high intensity all the time? Well, maybe you should switch to low and medium intensity for a while. And this is what, just simply what we call periodization. So you want to change your training over time so your body keeps responding to the stimulus. This is the most important thing. So don't uh, spend too much time thinking about your VO2 max number per se, but try to simply have an idea of where it is using those three methods that I described in the video. And then uh, based on the other information I just gave you, decide on how you're going to orient bonjour, uh, on how you're going to orient your training um, here you are for this little video i hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions or uh, future videos you like me to make uh, make sure you leave a comment uh, below if you don't follow me yet uh, make sure you join us on the new instagram channel i'll put the link below and i'll see you in the next one